Well, was a disappointment because they lost the final and didn't win the gold medal. However, it is the greatest achievement to this moment by any American volleyball team in the history of the Olympic Games. But there's no big financial future for volleyball players. This isn't like a, a Carl Lewis or the basketball players or, or, or people like that. Dick Schapp wondered, what in the world happens to them after this? Where do they go? They gave up their lives, some for two years, some for ten. Their social lives, their professional lives, their private lives. They gave up everything for volleyball. And for a fiercely demanding coach, a transplanted Israeli named Ari Selinger, who told them that if they gave up their lives, he would not let them down. He would lead them to a level American volleyball had never achieved. People think I'm a hard-driving coach. I think I'm a very humane coach. I think I know what I want to achieve. He's a special person. It hurts. It hurts us to read the bad things about him, you know? Because one thing, we wouldn't spend seven years with someone we hated. I think at times I felt that I've been driven by the players to push them to the limits, and I just helped them do it. Their goal was gold. And the other night, against the People's Republic of China, the U.S. women's volleyball team, despite moments of brilliance, came up just one step short of its goal. Beaten for the gold, but winners of the silver. The first medal ever won by the United States in Olympic volleyball, by women or men. The sadness of defeat came in a distant second to the joy of achievement. We were still the most happiest women in the world. And there was a feeling there that I don't think anyone, any group of people, could ever have except love. It was just, I, I just, I'm speechless. I'm just speechless. It was just great. It was a great feeling. Many of the players are retiring. And last night, the team gathered for a farewell party, perhaps the last time they would ever all be together. Women who sacrificed together, sweated together, succeeded together. Now it is time for them to go out in the real world to start putting money in the bank, building careers, perhaps even enjoying life. I'm just going to take about a year and go and have fun and see the world and do some things that I've always wanted to do. It's kind of sad that, to know that I won't be seeing my teammates day in and day out, but yet I know that they'll always be there and I'll have the comfort that I made some great and long-lasting friendships. All the women will be comforted, too, by the knowledge that they have raised volleyball in the United States to a new level of skill, and acceptance. Today I was at the beach and there was a little girl just out in the water playing volleyball. She said volleyball, you know, of all things to say. And I thought that was really neat. So I think that it's all come out now. The sport can only go up now. When you hear about all the money people are going to make at the Olympics, remember there are many more volleyball players and amateur wrestlers and and yachtsmen and cyclists and people like that here than there are basketball players perhaps going on to big careers in the NBA. So coming up tonight, remember, a lot of live boxing still coming. And these are semifinals leading American boxers perhaps into the finals that will take place on Saturday night. We're going to have rhythmic gymnastics in its first time in the Olympic Games. Remember, sort of a combination of gymnastics and ballet for the women and the most dramatic thing perhaps of the evening, the final event of the decathlon, Daley Thompson going for the world record and his second decathlon championship in a row. The sun beginning to set now out here in California, down by the shores of the Pacific Ocean. We're going to be back, however, to this place and to these contests after this message and an ABC News brief.